Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on this video going over the additional design options. So up until this point, maybe you've reviewed some of the other tutorials that we have, like around categories and dividers or some of our photo tutorials that are more specific. But this particular tutorial is a little bit more general in that we're going to cover some of the options that we haven't had a dedicated video for. As usual, we start on the cookbook homepage. We're going to scroll down to the layout and design tile, and we're going to go to the design center. And as you can see here in the center, there are several different options that are clickable links that we can work with between first steps and additional design options. Theme selection is where you would just kind of see where you've already picked out, you know, cover and divider and layout and position and filler and, you know, kind of an overview of the theme that you have actually selected. The cookbook title and subtitle, just like it sounds, you would go here to make edits on the name of your cookbook. Selecting a cover, just like it sounds, but again, just a quick pro tip, the publisher requires a single file for your cover, for the back and front cover. It all comes on one, so see the cover design tutorial to get more information about that. So you're not going to select your cover here. We're actually going to design that outside of the cookbook software. Selecting dividers, again, we have a dedicated video for you to learn uh, about that. Recipe layout, there's a video dedicated to that. The introduction, dedication, and foreword is found here. And this is for the pages that are inside just after the front cover of your book. And so you can actually plug in a welcome message. This is more for your page. Uh, so if you have guests contributing to the recipe entry, that's what you'll find uh, there. If you scroll down though, cookbook message one, two, and three are the key spots for you to tell the story of your family, tell the story of your business, tell the story about the organization that's doing a fundraiser, Whatever the case might be, you know, if you're a food blogger, what got you into doing the food blogging, whatever the case might be. So there's not any character limit to what you can type into this spot here. You can make it as long or as short as you want. You don't even have to use it. You can actually skip and it will be just fine. If you want to work with it more full page sized, you can check this checkbox here and it is going to open up to be larger for you. So if you need those pages, definitely put them in. Again, it will flow through to make it two or three or 10 pages, however long you decide that your narrative is going to be. Hitting the back button here. The photos, again, we have several tutorials on photos. And finally, cookbook size in the first steps. This is where you're going to choose whether you want the digest size or the letter size version. You can always toggle back and forth between the two. If you choose to make this book eight and a half by 11 in this example, you would choose the radio button and click save. And then make sure you preview the book to see what it looks like because the size of your recipes and photos and all that is going to shift in a pretty big way. So. Either way, you can go back and forth between the two, see which one you like the best, and make your adjustments from there. So those are your first steps in this tile. Other additional design options. Recipe categories, we have a whole tutorial on that. Recipe sorting options is in the recipe layout video. Uh, same with one recipe per page. The include, exclude contributor list you'll find when you're adding recipes, the wizard has a spot for the contributor to be named. And so if you want that contributor page to build with the names that are being put into that spot, this is where you would make a selection to include or exclude that. So when you come to this page, Showing the contributor page in the cookbook, this is the checkbox that that's really referring to. So if you want the contributor page to build, it will build automatically for you in the front, the table of contents, and it will show the names of your contributors.
As for the recipe indexes, those indexes are going to build for you automatically and you can come in here to add or edit. And so there are some options by checkbox that you can play around with. Again, if you decide to change these up, be sure to hit save first and then preview the book just to see what it looks like. You can even enter some extra blank recipe pages, extra notes pages, and then choose where you would like those to show up. So at the end of the recipe categories, prior to the book indexes, both locations, whatever the case might be. As for the white space filler, that can also be found, that setting can be found in more detail on the recipe layout options video. The header footer options are in that video. The custom pages is also covered in the formatting photos where you can plug in any kind of custom page. So if you want to look at your formatting photos before you come here, I would suggest watching that video. But this here, when you click on add a new custom page, it'll take you through a wizard and it allows you to select where you want that actual page to drop. And then after that, uh, Reorder form, we don't really use that because you're using Creative Cookbooks and we have our client portal for that. The include, exclude helpful tips, if you click on that, it actually allows you to include those helpful cooking tips on the back side of your dividers. Now, if you've decided to go full page with your recipe photo, you'll want to uncheck this box simply because it will then shift your recipe photo to the right hand page and then the recipe for that photo will be on the next page. So that does mess you up there. Um, so pro tip, otherwise, again, play around with the settings, click save, preview your book, and see what it looks like. Outside of that, those blank recipe and note pages, we just talked about those. Um, and then binder and lamination options are not applicable since we do use the client portal through Creative Cookbooks to talk about our ordering options. As for the contributors, inviting new contributors can certainly help you. There's a flyer below that you can copy and paste and make you know, copies or email and send to your group. And so the uh, password and, and such is also included. So if you wanted someone to just log in and add a recipe directly, it will serve up just an add recipe page. So they don't have all these different options to choose from that you have to choose from. Thanks guys for joining us. As usual, you can always reach out to us for technical support at support at creativecookbooks.com and you can find other handy tutorials in our YouTube channel.